Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a video and I have a cool update. So I talked to Kelsey, he's coming on tomorrow. So we've got Sarah Frazetta as our special guest for the return of Super Fun Sunday and Kelsey Shannon is super co-host. And also Kelsey really has been enjoying these um, image uh, 30th anniversary videos and he's gonna actually do some with me so we're excited about that and we've already talked about um some comics that uh we both really like that um don't get a lot of attention and so we're excited to um turn you guys on hopefully to some books that are great image comics um early era image um and uh that you may not have seen um so the the goal too if you're making recommendations i'm trying to hit between 92 and like about 1998 um, after that, I mean, Image Comics and Wildstorm and the different companies, um, th there's a lot of hybriding that's going on, but, but, uh, the goal is to look at kind of the pure image, um, work. So anyway, today we're going to look at Gen 13, issue number three, which features Pitt as a special guest star. Um, there's a few reasons that I picked this book and I'll explain it as we get into it, but, uh, we've got, um, written by Brandon Choi, um, uh, pencils by J. Scott Campbell, uh, inks by the amazing Alex Garner. And uh, we'll look at the other credits once we get into it. But let's go full screen mode and check this out. So the reason that I picked this book is is a few. Uh, Jeff really started to get good at this point. Issues 3 and 4 of Gen 13. This is the mini series, not the ongoing series. Um, this came out in 94. So it's not actually a first wave um, uh, Wildstorm title, I guess you would call it, or image book. It's interesting too because I've I've referred to myself as almost like being like a fifth generation Wildstorm artist, but you know the thing is is you have you have the original wave of Wild uh, Image books that came out, which are the the founders of Image. Then you have kind of a second wave, which is in a weird way. Um, even though Wills Portacio was definitely part of the Image um, group. Uh, Wetworks kind of falls into that. Well, Wills had um, a death in his family, and it put him back in terms of scheduling for things. Um, Pitt kind of is the second generation uh, image book. I think in a way the Max is not in a way, but I mean the Max. But there was there was definitely really big and popular titles that were heavily associated with image comics that were kind of the second wave. Then you have all the, it, it, Wildstorm specifically I'm talking about, you have all the artists that were found by the talent searches that the original books brought in, meaning that as Jim Lee released Wildcats, there was a talent search in one of the early issues, and J. Scott Campbell was found through that, um, and other artists too. I'm not 100% sure everyone's stories, but then you have like even a, a third wave of uh, artists that came into Wildstorm. Maybe Dan Norton might fall into that batch. Uh, Nick Manabat, you know, could be considered second or third wave. Um, and then there were even some people that came in after them. And then I came in in like 95. So when that's kind of why sometimes I say that I don't really consider myself, um, you know, imagey enough. But anyway, so the reason that I picked this book, though, is not only is, is Jeff at this point getting really, really good. I'm under the impression that Jim Lee possibly laid out the first two issues of the miniseries. I've heard that. I, I don't remember if that's actually factual, but but you can kind of there is definitely a different a difference. Um, and it doesn't mean that Jim drew the pages. Layout can be a confusing concept. It just means that he basically blocked in the the sort of storytelling. He probably did it really quickly. I, I think probably they were, you know, circles and cylinders and gestural things and maybe the tilt of the angle. But, but overall, um, you know, J. Scott Campbell still drew all the detail. Um, and, and, but this is the first issue that Jeff actually laid out, him, uh, laid out himself. And I actually think that, you know, maybe those training wheels of Jim doing that um, definitely, um, you know, it built up maybe some... Um, momentum for him it might have also created a little bit of like man i can't wait till i get to lay out this stuff myself and use my ideas but you'll see the camera angles are more extreme um it's it's kind of more dynamic and and i remember getting these books and around issue three or four i jeff was very quickly becoming one of my favorite um uh, image artists and by issue five i was sold i was like man this dude is awesome <laughs> So anyway, let's get into this. This is a great cover. He draws a really fun pit. There's so much detail on this stuff. These guys were nuts. 
this is very, very time consuming work to put in this kind of um, attention to detail. It's no joke. And you'll see as we get into the pages uh, that it carries through. I've mentioned in past videos, you know, when, when you are focusing in on, um, let me see one thing really quick. I just want to make sure, is it going? I, I kind of tweak some of the files um, cause they were a little um, oversaturated. So here's the credits. It's, it's kind of fun to look at them because I can explain some things um, that, that are fun. So colors, Joe Chido, Joe would do these original color guides by hand um, with ink pens. So he would take uh, Prismacolor pens and a photocopy that was reduced to eight and a half by 11 and actually color the pages by hand. And then the color separations, which was a group of people would translate his ideas to um, the digital uh, tools, Photoshop. Um, we've got Sarah Becker, who ultimately became a real famous, you know, kind of um, editor at, the, at Wildstorm and went on to do the real world. Uh, Jeff Marriott, who's also a writer. Bill Kaplan, who I mentioned in the, the previous video, was the editor who ultimately um, I met with and hired me. Um, we've got... Uh, I just saw Jeremy Cox. Yeah, Jeremy Cox is a local guy. Nick Bell um, lived with Travis uh, when I was inking Travis on Wildcats. Nick Nick is a, a colorist, and I think he went on to do production too. And and here's Sandra Hope. Early job for her is she was assisting Alex Garner, which I replaced Sandra on Gen 13, assisting Alex uh, when Sandra went on to start doing her own books. Uh, Wendy Fouts is Matt Broom's wife, um, and Monica Bennett... Uh, was married to Richard Bennett, who is a real popular Wildstorm artist, and she actually is now married to Aaron Weisenfeld. So all kinds of interesting, you know, um, <laughs> uh, lineage throughout this. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty interesting stuff. <laughs> it is a wild storm, as they say. All right, so let's go back into full screen mode. I de like I said, these files were a little oversaturated and they're a little dark. So your comic book will probably look different. I have so many copies of these issues. Uh, honestly, is <laughs> the mini series of Gen 13, I have, uh, I don't even know how many copies of issues three and four. There's so many, I find them all the time. A lot of them are newsstand editions too. Um, anyway, so yeah, you can see Jeff is like pulling the perspective. He's got a real nice three point perspective here on the shot. I and mean, this is very, very dynamic um, and uh, just fun looking stuff. You can see a lot of Arthur Adams and Jeff's work. And uh, a lot of people call Jeff Scott. It, it, I think Scott is actually his first name. Um, but I always knew him as Jeffrey, Jeff, and so I will call him Jeff. Um, but most people now do do actually refer to him as Scott. So I don't think it bothers him that, that if you're from a certain, um, <laughs> if you hung out with him a lot at a certain time that you may call him Jeff. I, I, most of the Wildstorm, um, I think people do. Out of respect, though, if he preferred Scott, I would definitely just start calling him Scott. I could, I could reboot my brain. Um, this is a brave move right here. The black on her face. Let me uh, grab a little pointer. Um, but that that uh, that's that's you really have to commit to that because I, if I did that, it would not look right to me. Like right now, if I filled the face with black like that, I'd be dying to put um, a little suggestion of the nose, maybe just something in there. But uh, yeah, he went for it, and uh, it works. You know, it doesn't really bother me. It, it it's uh interesting this is really really cool shot too um and this is great also i mean it feels right out of like kind of the movies at that time you know also and jeff is a really really good student of of all things related to his art he doesn't mess around that's one thing that i saw working around him is he does his homework you know it's not an accident that this guy is as good as he is or that he got as good as as he is he really works hard on his stuff i mean there's some stuff in danger girl that i was looking at a few months ago i couldn't believe how much stuff he drew there's these these shots with the soldiers like lined up and he drew like every single character. This isn't like some Photoshop thing. And it goes back like this. And there's just rows and rows of them. I want to say, 
I might have assisted. I, 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 I continued to assist Alex Garner even when I was doing my own work. And if he ever needed help in like a pinch, I would sometimes um, help him out too. I, I feel like I, I, I ink some Danger Girl um, quite a bit of the last issue actually. But uh, I also think that I might have done a little bit of assist for Alex on that too. This is great too. This feels right out of a movie too. This whole this whole sequence is just great. I love the camera angles that he's using. He puts the camera low. He's got it above the scene. He's got it like with this very cool kind of skewed angle thing going on here. I'm, I don't even know if that's that actually might not be what it's doing, but anyway, it's it's just really really cool stuff. Um, this little hallway is just so neat looking. Very very creative. You could see when he got let loose do his thing let me uh like i said just the first few pages are going to be a little out of order because of um that i i um adjusted the levels on them and you know the the one thing that, that jeff actually dealt with a lot i actually have a lot of respect for him is is uh, brandon Choi and annie hartnell both are pretty panel heavy writers um just glancing at this page, I noticed right away when I saw how much was going on here, I was like, this is a lot of panels. But he had to draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's kind of what Crystal Planet's like. Um, you know, lots of seven, eight, and and um, they really, most of my pages sit in this um, thing. And you end up drawing a lot of stuff at this size. I need a little bit of a brighter circle over, but... But yeah, you end up drawing, I call it the two inch drawings that like everything is like about the size of a toothpick. <laughs> if you've gotten a lesson or review from me, I will point that out to people. Like if you if you if you draw too many drawings that size that you got you gotta mix it up and pull things in. This is awesome. Again, I, I tried to level this as good as I could to make it not um dark. Um but uh the colors and everything when you see the real book are definitely more vibrant and uh more clarity fun looking guns you know kind of unusual looking but still cool this is great i love how he would do these these faces like this it it's interesting because um yeah i i really really the one of the fun things about i think um being a fan of image comics you know to, to people that maybe weren't around when it was happening too was was how exciting it was watching these artists evolve you you had this opportunity while you were while you were enjoying what they were doing currently you kind of knew that everybody was improving and so if you were a fan of J. Scott Campbell or Joe Benitez or whoever was working at that time, you really couldn't wait to see the next book to see the improvement that they were experiencing too. It was like, hey, I, you know, I, I caught issue three, but man, did you see issue five? Holy shit, what is going on? What, like, what are these guys like? What are they? What are they eating and drinking and training? But, but um, I think that there was a really healthy. Um, uh, like excitement, you know, everybody was doing kick-ass work and they all fed off of that, you know, Hey, did you see like what so-and-so did? And then, you know, you've got young, um, enthusiastic artists that kind of want to top it. So everybody was pushing each other to these extreme heights. And, uh, that's how you get such a, a huge movement of, of really like exceptional talent. One of those classic uh, image hills, the rocky hill with the uh, stuff. This is actually very cool shot too with the silhouette of hers. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna brighten this one just a little bit for y'all. There we go. That should be a little bit better. This is so Arthur Adams. <laughs> So it was interesting. I went to J. Scott Campbell's house one time. I mean, I've been to his house many times, but one time in particular, and he actually broke out some pages that he had drawn in high school. Um, not not the the really good Mort Drucker like caricature stuff. Although I I did see some prints that he had of that stuff that were really nice. So so good. But um, he had a Wolverine story, some sequentials. I might have mentioned it in the Danger Girl thing because it it made a big impact on me. But but you could definitely tell that he he had a lot of um, 
not only natural ability but had had practiced a lot but but even his early stuff it's it's still quite good you know this is awesome and this is a funny thing too is is i i had mentioned in a, an older video about like if you some artists can pull this off and some can't it depends on your style but it's the um actually drawing stuff sitting on the panel border or just under generally speaking what ends up happening is um let me i'm gonna get out of full screen mode for just one second i want to grab like red red so it'll show up um yeah, generally when these artists will do that where it looks like they're laying on the panel border actually the things are dripping just a the tiniest bit underneath it like even her knee do you see how it's just going underneath it or her, her foot um but but uh sometimes it'll almost look like they're actually standing on the panel thing and, and i mean i guess you could you could do that but um yeah, I don't, my style doesn't really lend itself to that. It would look weird. It would look like I kind of messed up, but uh, cartoonier styles seem to withstand that um, approach a, a bit more. So if, if you draw, it might be something you maybe want to try, but I think because I move the camera around a different way, it doesn't, um, it doesn't quite work for mine. At this time too, J. Scott Campbell actually did um, occasionally ink um, some of his faces and eyes and stuff like that. I think what it was is, is people sometimes take that the wrong way. It's hard enough to draw this stuff and sometimes when you get like a little tiny face and you're really fighting to, to get it done, um, it is almost easier to ink it and just nail it down so that there's no margin for error because you know, when pencils sit around or you draw for another four or five hours on a piece or the inker gets it and they're spending 12 to 20 hours on it, um, you know, the pencils fade, they get a little smudgy and stuff like that. And you may lose this little tiny dot that's in an eye that's, you know, the size of like a pencil, you know, barely a pencil lead size. So that's a lot of times why um, that will go on. It's just, it's difficult to see something that tiny because you figure... You know, on an 11 by 17 board, they're just going to be like basically <laughs> pixel sized uh, things. Then this is another great, like, cool shot that that um, he he threw in here. You know, he's really flexing his um, perspective uh, muscles, and it looks really cool. You know, and lighting. He puts these nice shadows on stuff. Me, I'm gonna try to desaturate this just the tiniest bit and then brighten it. When you brighten it, it kind of pulls the saturation back up, so it's a tricky balance. His grunge was awesome. <laughs> He's so funny. <coughs> the first issue I loved when they were playing video games. It was so funny. Actually, in Crystal Planet, I got the opportunity to draw two uh, characters playing video games sitting on a couch. It wasn't um, uh, exactly like Gen 13, but it was funny. I was like, wow, what a like what a trip. Never really thought I would have to draw something like that. It turned, it turned out pretty good. It's actually one of my favorite things in the book, to be honest. This is the first issue of Crystal Planet. I had to do it. You know, but but these guys do set a precedent. If you're like a fan of someone like J. Scott Campbell, I mean, it's like he's got the TV dinner here, some video games, a controller. There's like all these like little attentions to detail on the throws in that are really really fun. Be with some butthead on the TV, um, and uh, it really makes things cool. This is awesome. <laughs> and look, it's just like Star Wars. It's, it's the good guys. They're coming to save him. And it's another Timmy. I thought this kid's name was Timmy. Everyone's Timmy in these books. I'm gonna I'll have to throw a Timmy in, in Blaster Kid. No. I definitely wouldn't. When I think of Timmy, I think of I don't know if any of you follow his channel, but Alpha Investments, the Magic the Gathering guy. Um he calls Timmy Timmy's are gullible um Magic the Gathering collectors. <laughs> don't be a Timmy. <laughs> it's it's <the> thing. <laughs> He's actually a very charismatic uh, YouTuber. I have to admit, I'm not, I don't follow Magic the Gathering um, and uh, I never played it, but I like his channel just because he's, 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 he's an interesting guy. But yeah, Alpha Investments, I think it's called Magic the Gathering channel, but he's great. His channel's really good. Any YouTuber could learn a lot from his delivery. Let's just put it that way. Oh, 
Wow, this is so good. So cool. Yeah, this is this is fun. It's like celebrating the 30th anniversary. I figured let's do 30 books, you know. They don't have to be number ones. It's just let's pick the best stuff of the first seven years of Image Comics and bring it. Oh, this pit stuff is so good coming up. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and like I said, tomorrow, Sarah Frazetta Live. 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time would be 1 o'clock East Coast. And um, it'll be fun. And then I'm going to get back to work. So he did an after Keon on this. I noticed that right there. Because um, Dale had a walking away pose on one of his. Yeah, so this is a spread. It's a little hard to see um, in uh, the scan. I'll, I'll zoom in on it again in a sec. But uh, yeah, so this is a double page spread. This would be a nice big piece, and it, you would have to turn the comic obviously to look at it. Uh, you know, it's you're you're flipping your book this way to check it out. But yeah, nice big shot. Love this. The image smoke was so cool. <laughs> If you actually, if you follow Jeff's career, you'll see a point where he starts putting the line decker smoke. That's a little more um, like this kind of thing, you know, where um, they're more like ribbons and not as much the bloopy smoke. This is a cool face. <laughs> he stretches it long. I, I generally try to keep my um, my mouth like contained with between the pupils. Um, but yeah, he's, he's flinging the lips, but yeah, this guy's, this guy's really, really pulling his mouth wide. Oops. It looks cool. Uh, again, turns the camera. It's, it's a pretty s standard shot. You know, if you just, if you look at like this, it's, but when, you know, just turning it like that really can add a, like some spice to things, even things like this. I mean, it's just, that makes it interesting. He kind of goes, jump, 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 you know, jump and come right through, come right through. He's got this nice frame that you see pit, his hand kind of directs you to Timmy. <laughs> good stuff and he probably does it just instinctually you know it's like he can just feel that things are right but you can really really feel this kind of frame that makes you focus in on pit and this helps too because it's pulling you to it so excellent oh yeah look at this and issue four is more of this so if you if you um like this Grab issue three and four of Gen Thirteen if you don't have them, because these these two issues are just pedal to the metal, big cool stuff, and um, the, the Gen Thirteen kids with Pip. You know this too. He does the chains and really interesting angles. He's not stuck on like a side view. You know this kind of thing. I and mean, if you look, these are laying. You know at angles. And it just makes them extra cool. He turns them and stuff like that. So. Yep. He could really work form. When you have your forms down, then you can you can draw all this stuff. And you know, the structure and stuff like that may be floaty. You know, like like his faces got more dialed in and stuff like that. But he understood how to put the the bigger pieces in. <laughs> Pitt's a little ear. Pitt's actually a he's a pretty cool character. Oh, this is such so awesome. It's almost got like a predator vibe. I don't really ever noticed that before, but he's kind of predator-ish. I mean, I know he's, he's, I would assume, sort of based on the Hulk and maybe Lobo or something. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. I remember... Uh... <laughs> having to learn how to ink arm hair and Alex evolved it 
past this point. This is kind of more of like, a, it looks like a rapidograph or something, or maybe a, I'm not really sure what he used to do it, but uh, his arm hair even got more and more like manicured um, as we went along. And uh, oh boy, that was interesting to learn. Once I got it, I was fine. But uh, yeah, like arm hair is pretty challenging. You What you kind of do is you sort of do them in rows and then just juxtapose them and have them cross. They need to be equal lengths, though. That will help. And you can kind of, then you wrap it around the form. But yeah, you're just kind of doing this. This kind of thing. And they can touch. But that's that's essentially what's going on here. And then you throw some randoms. Like, like this is what I tell people. when Even when you're rendering and stuff like that, the most noticeable lines of any rendering thing, uh, besides if you just throw a bad line, is this stuff right here. It's the stuff on the edges. Because it's the most exposed this is the most exposed so that's where you want the randomness that was funny the um <laughs> drew a dick um uh the, the <laughs> i'm stuck in hell what's going on my uh there okay um <laughs> it was like the it was like the there was like a magnetic lasso like on the brush tool for a second i'm gonna i'm gonna lower the saturation on it but yeah those are the most exposed lines anything that's that's hanging oh okay that's what it was um yeah, this this is the stuff that you're gonna see. So even when you're doing like you know big hatches, you definitely don't want any sort of weird dark spots. Like if you're trying to make a fade and you've got like weird gaps, it's hard for me to actually even do it bad. I, I've 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 found that that I'm s like it's almost muscle memory. But what my point is is um like these are gonna be the lines that they're gonna notice. Like if you have some weird like thing kind of going on, like that's that's more exposed. In here, it's not going to be as noticeable unless, like I said, you create a dark spot. Like you over render one little spot and then you've got blotches. So, anyway. Even this, that stuff is a nightmare when you're first learning it. Really, really tricky. But you can see he just takes the form and goes around it. And rows, you see, they're all going into the form. Or they go over it and around it. It's like the way Jeff draws hands. They're very, very stylized, but but uh, they're they're super cool. Okay, I need to wrap this up. I need to get to work. <laughs> Speaking of drawing. <coughs> Roxy. Roxy changed a lot by the um the fifth issue she starts looking really really pretty here she's a little more um a little more gaunt a little kind of more thin but she gets she gets real pretty issue five and the zero issue and then issue one of um gen 13 i think he really started to like nail her <laughs> grunge naked running around this is nice These are really good shots. He's really good at that. That's that's tricky. That's tricky stuff. Yep. He is good, good, good. And this has got a, a pretty fun pinup in it from an early, early Dan Norton. I think Chuck Gibson might have inked it. This is nice, too. Man, that's a lot of stuff to draw very detailed this is great these figures reacting to it are awesome pull out a little bit so you can see it this is killer too man oh the reflection is that a stat this looks like it might be a stat from the other page but jeff is crazy enough to draw that though to be honest but yeah i think i think these might be stats i'd have to go back and look at the book they might not they'll be stat meaning that like you take like an image from another panel and um the computer will put it in for you in case you don't know a lot of times the stat will be from the same page so it's easier to spot but i can't remember what we looked at i i'm nearly sure that was in the book Oh, man, there's so many freaking comics. Kelsey, if you watch this, let's do let's do Nick Manabat together too. I'd like to do that with you. 
um, that, that'll be fun. We have other ones that we were talking about, but uh, yeah, let's do some the, the original Cybernary. <laughs> It'd be fun to uh, see it and talk about it with you. Okay, yeah, so this is a pinup by Dan Norton and Chuck Gibson, and man, Dan's style completely changed from this. This is not a bad drawing by any means, but when you see it, it's like it just doesn't have any... Uh, character, uh, m meaning that it's it's well drawn, but there's there's not a real personality yet in his stuff. It's very functional. Now Chuck Gibson may have, uh, like in translations, something may have been lost. I mean everybody is learning at this point. Um, but um, yeah, it's funny. But Dan really really got good, and and man, this looks nothing like his stuff at all. But they're they're solid drawings. I mean, like the poses there mm, this is fine you know <laughs> crunch a shoe <laughs> oh my god grunge's outfit is so funny oh my gosh travis drew a piece i i i seen the original in pencil at his house one time it is the funniest thing it floats around online he's wearing like he's got like woolly boots <laughs> <laughs> There's two versions too. I think it, the one at Travis's house didn't have the sunglasses, but but um the the one that um I, I think that floats around uh, it was the original version where he had he had um, drawn them with like shades on, uh, but I I think whatever he had at his house was different. So he had either erased the sunglasses and drew in eyes, but it was pretty funny. But he had Travis had a couple of very funny early pinups that he did. They're nice. They're really beautiful pencils, but the drawings themselves are just kind of funny. It was he he was really good at that point, but a little bit um out of control would be the way to put it. Is uh he hadn't completely dialed in his aesthetic. Meaning like kind of the like the the style and the way that you handle the detail. And again, the letters columns are always really, really fun. Um I was I was asked um by Peter Palmiotti, if if I was going to do a letters column in Blaster Kid, and the, the answer is is yes, I I plan on doing it. It may not be literally in the first issue, but I have a, a couple of ideas. I've had them for a long time. I've always been a fan of of letters columns and things like that, and so I had a couple of ideas that would work <clears throat> for the the way that that crowdfunding books go, and so so there 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 may be um, there's two main options that I have. Um, but I'll talk about that when when I when I'm when I'm done with Crystal Planet, um, which will be probably five weeks, six six at the most. If it spills over six, it'll only be a few days. Um, but I I'm finishing issue the I'm finishing an issue next week, and then I'm going right into the last issue, and I'm going to get it done as quick as possible, as, as nice as possible, but as quick as possible too. But yeah, these um these letters columns are always fun. It's 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 you get an interesting insight into not only the creators but it's it's fun to see what the fans are reacting to what they're what they're curious about and whatnot and it really I, I think it's an important feedback that you get having things like a fan they don't necessarily off have to all be published but even seeing fan art you you, you start to get an idea of what people are um, seeing in the work what are they reacting to what are they um, you know. How do they interpret it? It's it's fun. So, all right, you guys have a great day. I'm going to get to work, and uh, tomorrow morning, come by and hang out with us live. It's going to be our first live show in a couple of months, and uh, it'll be it's going to be really, really fun. And like I said, I've got a really legit um, two surprises on the show that are, that are well worth um, tuning in for. So, all right, I'll talk to you guys later.